Hi, this is Abe from TV with Abe. I'm very excited to be here with Marco Panette, the creator and executive producer of the new CBS sitcom, Be Positive. Uh, how are you today, Marco? I'm um, great. It's premiere day, so uh, excited. Absolutely, me too. Um, I, I really like the, the title of the show, and I think it's an attitude uh, that we can all use right now. Um, can you describe uh, the new show for those who don't know about it? Well, it's funny. The title was the first thing I came up with, and that was seven years ago. And um, I had just had my own kidney transplant surgery, and I truly thought, you know, they'd wheeled me into recover, I, guess, I think, the next day. And I thought, wow, if I live, this would be a great show. I hadn't seen a show like this. So uh, so after I made it, I was like, okay, well, let's uh, try to do this. And I couldn't write a page of it for seven years. I don't know what was what block there was, or I didn't know how to treat the subject matter. It was so serious, yet I wanted to make it entertaining and not so scary for people that maybe wanted to be donors. Um, and I quickly, after my surgery, I uh, got a job. And it was the first time I'd ever worked with Chuck on his sitcom, Mom. And I don't know if you're familiar with Mom uh, as much, but um, they really did a wonderful blend of dealing with, well, alcoholism, but dealing with the darkness and the comedy of that. And I thought, maybe this is the guy that can help me find that, um, that balance to do this show. So seven years later, I, um, I finally said to him, I'd love to do a sitcom about this. And Chuck has, has been attracted to the, the, the darker things or the things that don't always usually reek of sitcom. I think sitcom is not one of his favorite words. Um, and uh, I wrote the script over last Thanksgiving. Uh, once he seemed interested in the, in the idea, I wrote it. And um, I was able to plow through and I wrote it in a week. It was really weird once he kind of blessed it. Um, so, and now here we are just about a year later. That's great. Were there any moments that you remember from your own process of the transplant that were just funny? You know what? I don't know if it's being a comedy writer or what, but I always like to try to find the comedy in something, even in our, in our tragic moments. Is there anything to laugh at? Um, and I grew up with, you know, we had our, our ups and downs as a family, but I also remember us laughing a lot. And so I think the whole family treated um, situations like that. And um, yeah, cause I've gotten that question a lot. It's like, how do you make this funny? I said, uh, well, again, I chose the name be positive, not be negative. I really did love that philosophy coming into a person's world who is facing life and death. Um, and how we choose to look at those things, which like you said, I think this past year we could really use right now. And, and uh, I know I'm jumping around a bit, but it, it, it just, it, the lead character of Gina in the show, the woman that actually donates her kidney, like my real donor in real life was one of the most positive people I'd ever met. And I thought people have to see characters like this on TV. I mean, this woman in real life truly, you know, heard about, it's a family friend. It was the daughter. It is the daughter of a, my mom's best friend. Um, my mom had told her friend, friend told her daughter, and I was home for Christmas seven years ago, I guess. And this girl who I didn't know, I mean, we grew up together, but we weren't bosom buddies. She plopped down on the couch next to me and said, I, I heard you needed a kidney. Uh, you're going to take mine. And I actually used that in the pilot. Um, and I had never, it was funny, that was the hardest part to get Chuck to believe. He said, so she just offered you. I said, I I'm as shocked as you are. I said, but there are people out there that will do that. And then I, the doctor said something interesting to me when, when I was kind of going through it. He said, you will be surprised who offers you their kidney and you will be surprised who doesn't. And truer words. We're not, we're never spoken. I mean, I really did find close friends, you know, and listen, I couldn't blame anyone that wanted to say no. I was like, oh, I get it. I get it. Um, but a, a teacher at my daughter's school who I didn't really even know said, I'll do it. This woman who I went with said, I'll do it. And it was, I, I go, why do people do that? And I really wanted to explore that. What makes someone do that? 
what does it give them purpose in life? And for a lot of people, it does. My life is worthy now. So I thought they were all really beautiful themes to explore. And it was really supposed to feel good. I didn't want to scare people, like I said, and I didn't want people to be put off by it or people to go, oh my God, it's such a horrible thing to have to deal with. Listen, we all have to deal with horrible things. It's how we choose to deal with them. And that's Absolutely. just the way I go down the road. Yeah, no, I'm really glad to hear that. And I also, I have a, a uh, personal family excitement uh, around this show because my mother-in-law donated her kidney to my father-in-law uh, a little d over a decade ago. And so when I said, there's a show about a kidney transplant, uh, they were very, very excited. Were they excited? That's good to hear as opposed yeah. to, there's nothing funny about it. They can't find comedy in that. Um, well, so I, I think they said that there, there, were, there were definitely some funny moments in it, but what we agreed upon is that there's a lot of stuff, um, anything related to, uh, hospitals or medical shows and all that, that we see that usually is not portrayed very realistically on television. And so I'm curious if there are things that you were insistent that you wanted to make sure were not a stretch or exaggerated and other things that you sort of let go because you knew that this is, this is it's a, an entertainment. A it right. is an entertainment, but I did, I knew uh, people from the organ donation community really supported the show very early on. And a lot of them came to the taping of the pilot. That's when we had audiences back then when we shot it. Um, but, um, and I kind of felt this little sense of responsibility. And like I said, if I could get like a person to even think about, you know what, I can donate a kidney. If I could save someone's life, I thought that would be incredible. That would be incredible. Um, uh, uh, so anyway, um, it was important to me to things like how long people wait on the kidney registry for a kidney. Um, but that's a great example. Uh, kidney registry works different state by state. So in Connecticut, it can be a four-year wait. California was a 10-year wait. But I did kind of generalize it because I didn't want to start going, well, we're set in Connecticut. So this is only a four-year wait. But over here, you can move... So if you talk, if, if you, if you call it artistic license, yes, but, um, but I also wanted people to know you don't get this tomorrow, regardless of where you live, you do not get a kidney tomorrow. And when I said to Chuck and God bless him, I said, wouldn't it be cool if we had this guy actually go into dialysis? I mean, show the people that are out there that don't just sit home. They look great. They get a phone call. There's a kidney ready and they go have the surgery. I mean, our plan is really to, this entire first season is get the girl's body ready, which I had to do in real life. Um, uh, get her mentally ready, get her physically ready. And so we don't just jump into this tomorrow. Um, we, we kind of track the whole process. And Drew, the male lead, gets a little sicker waiting for it, which amps his, amps his neurosis and his anxiety as well also. Um, so I'm trying to really keep it true. And I think that's important to Chuck as well. Um, but once in a while, we'll take some artistic license just because I think some details, I just don't find people will find it. I don't think people will find it that interesting. Right. I think that's true. I yeah. also, I know that you've used your own personal experiences uh, as inspiration for past shows. And I, I really, I'm a big fan of crumbs. I was actually thinking about that, that scene I always remember where I Fred Savage is... He's uh, he's reading a, a Playboy in his room, but he's actually hiding a Playbill I under can't it. Can't remember gets that when he gets caught. And that's uh, that's one of my my favorite that's scenes. That's hilarious. That show. That's hilarious. So, yeah, it, it didn't. You know what? I, I went very dark with that because I'd grown up in this household. I'd lost a brother. Um, my parents were splitting up, and I thought at that point everyone was looking for family shows. I was like, "What is this? Is this too dark?" For family shows. I mean, Norman Lear used to do these kind of things, but that was in the 70s. Could I even attempt to pull it off? And like I said, I think I, um, I did know how to find the balance. So I don't think it was successful for that reason. Even um, Jane Curtin, sorry, my nose is itchy. Um, Jane Curtin, who played the mom in it, um, said to me at one point, we have to be able to let go of your story and make it more universal. And I didn't hear that at that point. She was right though. And so I, hopefully I learned with this one. And, uh, and again, we're making it more of an entertainment for the masses.
but I've thank you for so liking I, it. I, I do i do love i did love it i was uh, no, that's really fan. that's really nice i can give you a, an apron we have, I have 100 aprons that are left over i don't know why but like for christmas we gave out aprons one year um send your apron <laughs> Um, I uh, know that a part of your work on another show that I really enjoyed, Ugly Betty, uh, was about uh, ensuring that there was a, a variety of indent identities and experiences on screen. How is that uh, at play with, with this show? Um, well, I mean, listen, we've also, we've come so far since Ugly Betty. Ugly Betty, it was still the uh, Latino show, you know. Now it's a show that has a diverse cast, right. um, you know, and that, that's, I, I think that is progress, frankly. Um, for me, that was that was the first hour long show I'd ever been involved in, but it had a lot of comedy in it. So I was able to treat it like a big sitcom, an hour long sitcom, because I didn't know I didn't know what I was doing. Frankly, I got the job. I was just a writer on it. I wrote the first script and all of a sudden they'd let go of the showrunner and they said, you're going to run the show. And I was like, I'm really flattered. That's really cool. And I loved the show, but um, I don't really know how to do that. Um, I'd run sitcom multicams. And in fact, my first day on the set as the showrunner, I started to give America Ferrara notes on her performance. And she said, uh, you know, we're on my back for this shot, right? And I was like, uh-huh, uh-huh, okay. Well then forget my notes. Um, so hopefully I learned over the next few years. And it was one of the best experiences I ever had. It was so much fun. And like I said, that was a melting pot, that show. That was terrific. And, and, um, and in terms of coming further along, I mean, this was cast now for actors. We didn't say, well, I need a black actor. I need an Asian actor. I need, we auditioned everyone. And the best one got the job, which is the way, you know, that's, th that's, that's the way to do it, I think. And um, like, I didn't write a black role. Um, and years ago, we did. There was, well, this judge, is, and it was the most stereotypical things in the world. Um, I found that more offensive. I, I, I saw a lot of white shows that would hire a Black actor or actress for the waitress role. And they would, we're re, well, we're being diverse. I said, I don't think we are. You know, you have to make those people, they're part of the ensemble. They are, they are, we're all part of the same group now, you know, and as you can see in our in our dialysis group, um, and you will be seeing in the um, at the old age home as well. So, that's so were point. you were you set on Thomas Middleditch and Annalie Ashford from the start, or and had you what had you seen either of them uh, in that that you knew? I'd seen a ton of Broadway that Annalie had done. Um, I I didn't see Masters of Sex because Allison Janney, who I was working with at the time on Mom, was also in it, and she was naked. And I said, I can't watch that show if I'm going to see you naked. And she laughed, and I said, I can't, I just can't. Um, you're like my sister. Um, so uh, I didn't watch Masters of Sex, but everyone said she was wonderful. So I was an enormous fan. I knew Chuck was a fan independently. And um, Thomas, this is kind of interesting. Um, it's a hard role to find. I, we didn't want the normal sitcom suspects you know we really wanted people like oh you hadn't seen these two do sitcom um one of my best friends from the time i was five to the till high school the end of high school was a co-star on silicon valley and she is actually the one that sent thomas the script i said i don't think thomas is going to want to come off that kind of hbo thing and do more of a mainstream multicam and then she called me, she goes, I sent it to him. I was like, what? And he liked it. He wants to meet you guys. So I don't think it would have really happened without her. Um, so uh, we were thrilled. We couldn't, have, I mean, that was a gift. You know, when you're trying to cast, to find people funny and who can do drama. I mean, God does not give with both hands. And so I couldn't believe I was lucky enough to get two leads like that. I was really flabbergasted. Um, so we built from there. Um, I'm trying to think of anyone else. I, no, then um, Ken Miller and Nikki Valko are amazing casting directors. They brought in the other actors. I think Chuck might've worked with one or two of them on one of his hundreds of other shows. Um, I hadn't. Um, I worked with Linda Lavin uh, on, an old, on another old show and uh, we became really close friends. And I kept saying to her, I'm gonna write you a role. You're just too good. I want you to do this. And uh, 
she of course moved to New York the week before we started shooting. So I, so she jumps on a plane and comes out here pretty much every week to do her scenes, but she's amazing. That's great. I, I think they're really, they're great fits. Um, I think, uh, Thomas is just he I, I wouldn't have necessarily expected that he would be the, the right person for this but I think he's perfect and Annalie and everything that I've seen her uh, she's always been sort of the comic relief and so to have her in a role that lets her just indulge fully I think is, is did you is see wonderful. her do theater did you I see haven't her? no haven't seen oh. any of her theater really amazing I mean she steals the show but uh, yeah I, I think you're right again they're not the they're not the expected choices which I loved I mean we all know those actors that could have done this in sitcom right. but um but yeah, to have someone with the gravitas that they both have, I just thought we were really blessed, really blessed. I mean, it all kind of happened. It was very, very interesting. That it was like the fact that James Burroughs came in and directed it. Uh, Jimmy Burroughs directed my very first pilot, Caroline in the City, 25 years to the month of when we shot this. Um, so it was a really, really lovely reunion to work with him again. I didn't think I'd have that chance. And that was really wonderful. And um, Amy Peets, who was a dear friend and was one of the leads in Caroline in the City. I gave her a role in the pilot. It was unfortunately, it was cut, the whole part was cut, but now I can use her again. But it was just nice, that whole week was just really lovely having those people around you, you know? Good, well, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad and I, I uh, look forward to everyone seeing this show. I wish you a lot of luck with it. Um, Thank you so much. V Positive uh, will uh, start tonight, November 5th. Uh, it'll be Thursday nights at 8.30 p.m. on CBS. Uh, so thank you again for talking to me. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Of course. Thank you. Same here. Take care.